Okay, so hello everyone. I'm Kate uh, from Katarzyna Strzemska. So I am front-end developer and UI designer at Scalac. Uh, you can reach me uh, on Twitter. Here goes my nickname. Uh, what I'm doing? I do a lot of stuff at Scalac. One of those uh, is programming Clojure Script. Yeah, in production it is. <laughs> um, what can we say about Clojure Script? Just <laughs> so maybe uh, some facts for you uh, guys. Uh, Clojure Script is uh, actually a pretty young language because mm. it, the first release was in uh, 2011 and still developed and uh, everything is fresh in Clojure Script actually, uh, but it's already in production. For example, eBay uses uh, Clojure Script. Uh, what is very good for uh, front-end developers in web development is that uh, there are actually uh, uh, Clojure Script interfaces for React. Uh, there is OM, uh, incoming OM Next and Regent. So, uh, why Clojure Script? Oh, fire! <laughs> uh, Clojure Script is very simple. It has minimal syntax. Like, there is pretty much just uh, symbols, primitives, and, and that's it. Every statement, every operation is kind of a symbol, a function. And every function returns a value which is uh, used to, to get uh, a result. So, yeah, there is no syntax here, <laughs> actually. Uh, because uh, there, there is not uh, a lot of uh, very complicated statements in Clojure Script, and every function return uh, a value. Uh, every every uh, thing in Clojure Script returns uh, uh, an answer to the next uh, uh, step uh, of program. There, there is uh, there is a safety because we we avoid uh, null. For example, no pointer exceptions or stuff like that. Sorry, I will compare to JavaScript where we can have a function uh, which has no return uh, at all. For example, it's it's impossible in Clojure Script because in Clojure Script everything has to return something, even if it's uh, just the true or false. <laughs> oh, uh, it's safe because of uh, immutable data, which is very important in Clojure Script. Uh, every data is immutable, which means that we cannot mutate uh, this data. Every uh, update creates a new copy of updated value. This is very, very important, and uh, that data structu structures are persistent, which means that, uh, again, uh, even if we update something and there will be a, a new, uh, uh, a new uh, copy of uh, some part of data, we have uh, in the structure there will be um, some stuff which, which was not changed, it will be persistent. So it's, it's very important in memory, for memory because uh, there is not such a thing like uh, every update makes a copy of copy of copy. Uh, every update uh, creates uh, just a copy of updated element which is connected to the other uh, data and uh, points to the to this data so mm, this uh, this is very uh, efficient when when it comes to memory i <laughs> sorry i forget about uh, so yeah, this is also efficient because of uh, Google Clojure uh, compiler, which comes with, uh, for example, uh, dead code elimination. But this is not uh, the whole stuff which comes with Google Clojure uh, compiler. Uh, it's very safe, 
and it comes from Google, so we can trust uh, this, this compiler. Um, so don't be afraid of uh, don't be afraid of uh, closure script because uh, immutable data is actually very powerful. And what's more, closure script is pretty easy when you uh, get the uh, when you get the the, the 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 creating creating of functions or and uh, defining functions. That's pretty all. That's pretty all. So how looks uh, closure script data structures? Uh, here I uh, pointed vectors and uh, maps and sets, but there are also primitives as uh, number or string um, or bool. But uh, as you can see, it's pretty simple. And closure script uh, has vectors, maps and set just like just just like that, right? So uh, comparing again to JavaScript, we don't have sets or maps uh, in there, right? And uh, I would like to make some, uh, oh, maybe later. So what's more, we have, uh, comparing to JavaScript, we have uh, Top level variables and local variables, which is not uh, accessible uh, in uh, JavaScript. So, when we want to define our uh, global variable, we just def uh, define it like that. Uh, this is a kind of symbol. Uh, Clover scripts uh, comes with uh, a pack of uh, symbols which uh, help us uh, coding. Uh, one of the uh, one of them uh, one of those is def. There is let. Uh, let is uh, just uh, it creates a scope for for uh, uh, variables which which are local, which are exist only in this scope, which creates let. So that's that's how it looks. Function. So, as you can see, defining function in Clojure scripts looks uh, pretty much different than in other languages, in object languages or JavaScript, for example, because we are actually we used to this, right? We used to write function name and and just takes arguments and returns something, or even not in JavaScript. Well, defining function in uh, closure script or closure because it's very familiar. It's pretty different because, uh, as you can see, everything is of course if in parentheses, and um, and here comes the uh, body of uh, of our function which returns argument. Of course, we can make body bigger than this. But we can we have to just put it in parentheses and then write more of code. Uh, here I would like to some to make some live coding for you. Actually, hope it works. It's pretty cool because uh, at our company we created uh, a. Uh, Pretty great console for uh, using and learning Clojure script. Um, so let's define our function. Oh, I'm not writing. Why? So I'm defining my function with which takes argument one and just simply returns it. So 
So uh, the consul said to us that uh, under my function we have uh, we have this function, and that now uh, to call this function we just simply have to use this symbol which uh, CloudScript created to us and give it some argument. As you can see, function return five. <laughs> Uh, it's pretty simple, as I said, but you have to change the way of thinking when you have to when you want to to switch to closure. Um, of course, uh, there there comes uh, to my mind uh, history files because closure uh, was uh, based on Lisp. This is probably you all know. <laughs> and but it has uh, some uh, things that um, that are uh, relate that relating to to JavaScript because in JavaScript we have uh, these anonymous functions which are not very great for for you uh, just just saying that using uh, anonymous functions uh, is. Not a good uh, practice, but still, we have access to them. Oh, and for example, oh yeah, everything is a symbol. So even if statement is a symbol which returns something, because we are used to to this that uh, there there is a uh, if statement in I don't know Java Scala, Scala probably <laughs> everywhere, but in Clojure Clojure script if has to return something all the time. Uh, uh, and this uh, uh, return stuff we can use um, later on. So here comes the if, the statement, the statement, the mm, and if true, if uh, if this is if this pass, first uh, argument is our uh, return value. If if not, the second argument is our uh, return value. Again, we can uh, just put there. We can put there anything we want. For example, uh huh. This is funny. So, as you can see, the, the, the coding, the, the style of coding is a little bit different than in uh, other languages because uh, everything is just in uh, parentheses and it's done uh, one by another. So, what do you think? Which, uh, what re will return this statement? <coughs> yeah, probably. Well, let's check. Yeah, it's equal. So as you can see, if statement checks if seven and uh, the sum of uh, three and four is equal, and that's that's it. So math operators are also symbols which uh, just get us other functions uh, as any function, uh, two arguments, which is four and five, and sum this up. Uh, what is very uh, good in CloudScript is that in web development we uh, we really need mm, to interrupt with JavaScript because JavaScript has uh, things like DOM operation, uh, DOM operations, like uh, manipulations, and uh, in HTML, and we have to use it some uh, in our code. So it's very simple. We just uh, we just have to call the namespace JavaScript, and then from this namespace call function alert. 
and that's it. Okay, so let's go to what we need to have uh, our Clojure script uh, project. Clojure script uh, project needs Java 8 because of uh, standalone jar with uh, Clojure script uh, compiler. <laughs> so uh, just uh, simple skeleton. This is uh, uh, this is done without any uh, generator for projects because. Uh, actually, now we have Langen and Boot, which uh, are very uh, great uh, tools for managing uh, Clojure script projects, and um, and we don't actually actually need to know this, but uh, it's pretty pretty good to to know the basics. So the basics uh, for Clojure script uh, project is to have the source uh, directory with. Uh, with our namespace hello world and first Clojure script uh, file. Uh, we will need our jar to, to compile Clojure script. What's more? Um, okay, so our uh, core file we just uh, have uh, defined uh, namespace because cl Clojure, uh, in Clojure and in Clojure scripts, namespace are obligatory. So we have to uh, define our namespace, uh, which is very important uh, later on for Google Clojure um, compiler, which uh, for us decides wi which p uh, parts of our code will be included to the uh, to the given project. Uh, so we just enable console print and print line hello world. This is pretty pretty simple. Um, uh, the build uh, Clojure uh, is just building the Clojure uh, script file and uh, project. Uh, so what we have here is just uh, a simple uh, operation of building uh, everything which is in source uh, and the main uh, namespace will be our hello world and where it goes to. So this is pretty simple. Okay, so yeah, the last step is just to build uh, our closure uh, file with uh, with Java, and uh, and then uh, link our compiled file to the to the HTML. So that's that's all. How it looks. Okay, so I just uh, I created before our meeting <laughs> a simple simple uh, project with which uh, define a primitive uh, with some four and five and then, and then just al uh, alert this argument. Then in our console, uh, I simple I simply compile this file. You have to believe me that it's there. <laughs> And then here is our hello world. Comes our result of Clojure script file. Um, okay. Okay, but that was like basics. What's next? What's next? We have uh, a lot of uh, options like Leningen, a pretty nice boy. Uh, Leningen for uh, for start is it's much more simple than boot, which is uh, uh, going the another way. It's much more conf configurable, configurable, configurable. But still, you, uh, we have to know something uh, about closure and about uh, how it works when you want to use boot and lining and it's, it's very very simple and then in web development we have interfaces for react like uh, I said uh, in the beginning we have om we have regent uh, and we just simple can use it with react which is a very nice uh, it works very nice together because, uh, as you probably know, uh, React works with Virtual DOM, which uh, 
states on uh, immutable data uh, as uh, closure script. And it's pretty uh, hard to do this with JavaScript. Um, this uh, here, uh, I want to just say a little about uh, other languages uh, which compiles to JavaScript, like TypeScript or uh, CoffeeScript or Dart or ECMAScript. Uh, it's the, the, uh, these languages are very cool, and they uh, they are nice to to use uh, as. Um, as it, it would they, these languages comes with uh, very nice uh, things like local variables and uh, and uh, object uh, uh, classes and and a lot of other stuff, but it's still the same way of thinking. So, Clojure scripts uh, comes with a very simple uh, way of uh, developing. Uh, uh, programs and uh, applications. But about Lane, <laughs> so uh, just uh, installation uh, Lane in, um, in macOS is it's kind of piece of cake. <laughs> and then uh, another thing is FigWheel. FigWheel uh, help us with uh, live coding in CloudScript because uh, it's a very nice tool. Uh, which uh, observes our uh, changes uh, in uh, closure script files and just compiles everything in, in live time. So we uh, and then refresh the website so we can just like code as in JavaScript, for example. Um, so as you can see, uh, creation of uh, of a project which has FigWheel inside and uh, and it's actually Node project. It's pretty simple with Lane. Um, and just making work is like making work any other project with JavaScript. So we have just um, started with a simple command line fig wheel and then it just works. If you want to learn more about ClojureScript, <laughs> I invite you uh, guys to, to uh, see our website, which is ClojureScript.io to learn uh, a lot more about this language, which is, which is very nice. And also, there is a nice website uh, which translates JavaScript to ClojureScript, um, because it's very good to know the differences be between these two languages. And that's it. <laughs> Any questions? Usually when you transpile languages like any language to JavaScript, uh, sometimes uh, there's quite an overhead about uh, the way, because sometimes languages have some unnecessary baggage. Bag bag so how does ClojureScript handle that? What was the... Uh, the baggage uh, of compiling ClojureScript yeah, to... So for example, the Hello World uh, example, how large is it? Uh, okay, it's not very very large, but we have to know that uh, closure scripts um, pack inside our project uh, the closure uh, the Google closure compiler. So uh, some packages from this uh, pretty huge uh, compiler. But uh, does it always include the whole Google closure compiler? Or no, no, just just na namespaces which are needed to to work. Yeah. Uh, could we get back to the uh, slide with let constant? Let. Uh, it's okay. Let me give a second. <laughs> Have you noticed the the error? <laughs> okay, so here, right? Ah, yes. Uh, ah, okay. No, I just wanted to know if I can use the previously defined variable uh, in the definition of the second. This one? No, no, no. Uh, in the left construct. But I see you are using x in the definition of y, and it's okay, right? Yes, yes. It's just the, the, these are local, so they, they work inside this parenthesis of let. Uh -huh. So it, it works the same as if I uh, use one let to define x, and then inside of it, the other let to define y. 
Yeah, but let uh, takes a vector as an argument, so you can uh, define as many uh, variables as you want in one let. Okay, okay. Uh, I've got another question because yeah. you said the, uh, the uh, anonymous functions in JavaScript are uncool. Why is that so? Uh, because you cannot debug them very well. So this is mostly about it. Uh -huh. <laughs> uh, oh, okay, JavaScript uh, at all is pretty hard to debug, <laughs> as you probably know. But uh, anonymous functions are the the position in memory of these functions is just unknown. <laughs> yeah, and JavaScript comes with uh, very poor. I don't know collecting of uh, any garbage, so that's that's why, yeah. But then when it comes to the debugging, how, how do you debug the, the, the cloud script? This application, yeah. Uh, okay, so uh, cloud script uh, is, uh, it's more strict than JavaScript, so it won't compile if you have uh, any problem, but uh, when it comes to debugging, it's a good question, I can Check it for you. <laughs> okay, can, can it generate uh, source box from, from that? Like if I write in Chrome script and I want to uh, step by step debug in browser, then I can use source mapping? For yeah, for close yeah, script, yes. Okay, so this answers the question. Yeah. yeah. The, uh, most browsers are uh, supporting the cloud script uh, now. So, so you show some interrupt interrupt on Sorry, interrupt. Is, is yeah. Interrupt with JavaScript, but yeah. can I just uh, any JavaScript library like GreenSock or jQuery? Yes, yes, it? for sure. You can just put the uh, put the any uh, JavaScript library and use it as namespace because as I sh uh, as I showed uh, in interrupt slide, it's mm -hmm. somewhere near. Uh, when you want to use uh, a function from another namespace, we just call this namespace and function from it. And that's all. So uh, the compiler will compile. If, for example, I'm going to call uh, an existent uh, function in jQuery? Uh, yes, it, it won't. But uh, if there is any error inside uh, this function, ClaruScript won't uh, notice that. Because it's, it's not. Uh, yeah. Uh, this, this much connected. Uh, but this function have to return something to close script, come uh, back. But this is a way when, where you ca can just put Does some uh, dumb interaction. Huh? Does alert return anything? Uh, actually returns true. Okay. <laughs> so that's so what happens if it doesn't return? Anything. Uh, well, <laughs> it's a good question. <laughs> no, I mean, it's like, what happens when it doesn't return anything? But, uh... Is there an error, or what happens? If, if it doesn't return anything? If we want to uh, use... Uh, uh, in this operation, one, uh, nothing happens. If we want to use something which returns <coughs> this function, then we, have, uh, w then we can have error. But you said that it has to return something. Yes, but when it comes to interrupt with JavaScript, okay, you have me. ClaruScript is much more open for, for JavaScript errors. So, that's it. Thank you. Thank you.